Multi-material printing adds a hypothetical fourth dimension to 3D printing by allowing you to print in multiple colors and multiple material types in the same print. However, it does rely on you understanding how to use the painting tools in something like Prusa Slicer. So in this video, I'm going to be going through the paint tools in Prusa Slicer, explaining what they each do, and also covering some of the techniques that I use whilst painting in Prusa Slicer. I'm going to be doing this using my TARDIS lamp design that is now available for you to download and print from makeworldandprintables.com as the example. And I will be looking at the techniques that I use for printing the different detailed parts and how to get around some of the difficulties. So, as the doctor themselves said, allons-y. So this is my TARDIS light box that we're going to be using as the demonstration model in this video. The first thing you want to do is make sure you have correct filaments set for this print. So we only need four colours, so I've got four sets over here. Make sure you have the right material type set, I usually print this in PLA. And then we'll need white, blue, black and silver. So first of all I'm going to go through the different painting tools and then I'll go through some of the techniques which I personally use. So select an object and then go over and select the multi-material painting tool or hit N on your keyboard. This is going to then hide everything else in your print bed so you're only looking at the object which you're actively painting. In the menu you'll be able to select two different colours. The first colour you'll paint on using the left mouse button. You can select any of the filaments that you have applied in the filament section and you can change the colour as represented by using the box on the right. This can be particularly useful if you're printing with a couple of colours that are very similar looking but you want to be able to identify them whilst you're painting, this will allow you to represent one of those colours as a different colour. The second colour that you select is exactly the same, but it will be painted on using the right mouse button. Below this is the tool type, where you can select which of the three painting tools that you're using. We're starting out with the brush tool, and beneath that you can choose from three different brush shapes. By standard this is set to sphere, and if I hover over the object you'll see that there is a sphere where the cursor is pointing. You can change the size either by dragging the bar in the menu or hold ALT on your keyboard and scroll up and down on the mouse wheel. As I mentioned, to paint all you need to do is click the left or right mouse click button depending on the colour you want to paint. When you do, it will apply the paint to the area that you are hovering over and you'll see here that the sphere tool is a volumetric painting tool. This means that it is a volumetric sphere that it is creating and when you click in that area, it is painting any part of the object that is within that sphere. Because it's volumetric, this means that it is going to paint an area even if it is a hidden facet and you can't visibly see it whilst you're painting. At any point in the multi-material painting mode, if you hit clear all, it will clear any painting which you've applied to the currently selected object. Now if I switch to the circle brush shape, you'll see that as I hover over the object, there is a circle rather than a sphere. You can still change the brush size either by moving the bar in the menu or holding ALT on your keyboard and scrolling up and down on the mouse wheel. If I click and paint in roughly the same place that I had with the sphere tool, as I rotate the objects and look at the other side you'll see that the hidden facets which I couldn't see as I painted have not been painted. This is because the circle brush is a perspective based brush and not a volumetric one. This will paint connected facets to the surface that you're clicking on that is within the circle from the perspective that you are currently viewing. So here if I click on the flat surface behind the raised area, because it is not a directly connected facet to that area, it's not painting the foreground but it is painting a circle from the perspective I had when I painted it. We'll look at this more later on but for now we'll clear all and move on to the final brush shape, triangles. As you may know your STL is entirely made up out of flat sided triangles. So even a curved area is made up out of lots of very thin, very small triangles at slight angles to the previous one. Using the triangles paintbrush allows you to paint an entire triangle a single colour. This can be a great way of quickly painting a smaller area but ensuring you still have a nice straight flat edge. As with the other paint tools you can either just click and paint once or you can click hold and drag your mouse to paint a whole area. If you're clicking and dragging with the triangles brush, I would advise doing this a bit slower. If you do it too quickly, it may skip some triangles which will either cause issues in your print or you're going to have to go back and clean them up. If you go slower, it's more likely to capture all the triangles that you are brushing over. So that's all three types of brush shapes with the brush tool. Let's now move on to the smart fill tool type. With the smart fill tool type selected, you get an option for smart fill angle. By default this is set to 30 degrees but for now I'm going to put this down to 0 and then I'll come back to that in a minute. 
you can see as I hover over the model, it highlights flat areas and I'm able to paint the entire area with one click. However, as I mentioned before, there's no true curves in an STL, it's all made out of flat sides that are at slight angles to each other. So with the current setting of zero degrees, I'm only able to select a single one of these flat surfaces and not a whole curve. If I was to hover over the top of this extrusion, I can paint that because that is a single flat surface. Let's clear all for a second and then change the smart fill angle. I'll put this up to around 50 degrees and then move back over the object and let's see what we can paint now. This then allows me to paint an entire curved surface, but it's still not painting the whole object. The angle that you set in the smart fill angle is the maximum angle that the fill tool will fill up to. Any surface that is connected to the area you're painting with a greater angle than this will not be painted. So in other words, with the smart fill brush selected, when you click on an object, it will paint every surface connected to the area you're clicking that is connected by an angle less than the angle that you have set. So let's move on to the last tool type, the bucket fill. To actually show you what this does, I'm going to quickly switch back to the brush tool and a sphere and then just paint on a random circle on the surface. Let's switch back to a blue so it's nice and easy to see. And I painted a completed circle there. If I go to the smart fill and try to paint in this area, it's going to paint over the entire surface within the angles that I have set. However, if I go to the bucket fill tool now and click in the middle of this circle, it has filled in that circle. Whereas the smart fill tool is limited by the angle of the surface, the bucket fill tool fills up to the point there is a different painted area. You can see here there's a bit of an issue with the painting still and this could end up in a messy print. So if we switch one of the colors back to white, select smart fill, we can just paint this surface based on the break of that angle change. One other setting to mention, which is available regardless of which painting tool you have selected, is the clipping of view or sectional view. As you drag this, it's going to hide part of your print, and this can be really useful for accessing hard to reach places so you can paint them. You can adjust it by either sliding the bar on the settings menu or holding control on your keyboard and scrolling up and down with your mouse wheel. This will hide a section of your model starting from the current position of your camera, but you can move the camera around and it will remain in that same angle. With the clipping distance set to anything other than zero, you can just click reset direction and it will reset the direction that the cutaway is happening from your current camera position. If you're ever done with the clipping view, all you have to do is drag this to the left or set it to zero. So that is all the painting tools. Now we can look at some of the techniques that I use whilst I'm actively painting in Prusa Slicer. If we come out of painting mode, one thing to quickly mention is that you can right click on a model and you can assign a default color for that model. If you go to change extruder, you'll be able to set which filament that model is printed with in any area that isn't painted. Now it's easy to assume that the default color for an object should be the color that is most dominant on that object. The TARDIS is mostly blue, so you'd think that the default color should be blue. However, ideally the default filament should be the one that is used in the area which is most difficult to paint. If you have it set at the default, you would then not need to paint in that area. If we have a look at the sign on the front of the TARDIS here, and I use the Smart Fill tool, I can paint the front white, and I can paint the letters black. But you can see that there is going to be the depth of each of these letters still painted in blue. This would take a long time to go through painting all of these edges from every angle, ensuring that I hadn't missed any. So one way around that could be to change the default filament for this object to white. Then all I would need to do is go back into paint mode, use the Smart Fill and black, and then just paint in the letters themselves. The rest of it is still going to be white, so I wouldn't need to go through painting each of these little surfaces. However, the blue areas of the TARDIS does have a lot of detail to be painted in, so it's probably still best to use blue as the default filament for this model. So let's clear all and switch this back to blue. There is a different way, however, to work around the issues with this text, so let's have a look at that. If we go back and we use the Smart Fill tool to paint the bulk of the cyan white again, then we go to the Brush tool and select the Sphere, if we then use this sphere to paint over all of the lettering, because this is a volumetric paintbrush rather than a perspective-based paintbrush, this is going to fill in all of those hidden surfaces regardless of the angle. All I would need to do then is just switch back to the Smart Fill tool and paint the base of each of the letters in black. The next thing I wanted to look at is less a technique and more I wanted to highlight the importance of not missing small areas of the wrong color. If we come in and we have a look at the keyhole on the TARDIS, uh, we'll go back into paint mode and we'll change one of our colors to silver. 
Then if we come in with Smart Fill, we can paint in the keyhole. If I then slice the model and then look back at this keyhole, you'll see that there is a big blue blob in the middle of this keyhole. This is obviously not what we want. Now there wasn't a big feature of this size on the keyhole. If we go back to edit mode and we zoom in on the keyhole, you'll see that the inside of the keyhole is still blue and that is what's happening here. Even though this is a really small area, because of the size of the filament and the way that it's being sliced, it still has to be represented and as a result ends up becoming a much bigger feature than it is represented here. So what we need to do is, using the Smart Fill tool, go through and make sure that this whole internal area is also painted. If we slice this again now, you'll see that we no longer have this big blue blob in the middle of our keyhole. And that's the techniques I used to paint my TARDIS lightbox in Prusa Slicer. If you'd like to have a go at painting and printing this TARDIS lightbox yourself, I'll leave a link to this and the rest of my TARDIS collection in the description below. Well, I hope this helped you get your digital easel and palette ready for printing in Bruiser Slicer. If you did find this useful, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. It does, as I've always said, make a huge difference to me and it allows me to keep on making these videos for you guys. Until next time, thanks very much guys and happy printing. Thanks very much for sticking right to the end guys. Why not check out one of my other videos now? I've got a tutorial going all the way through how you can edit different models directly in Bruiser Slicer and just a whole host of other maker content. Again, thanks very much and until next time, happy printing.